Hello, everybody, and welcome back to A Swift Look. I'm Zoe, and today we are going to be revisiting my Taylor Swift Track 5 song rankings. So for those who missed my first Track 5 ranking, I went through Taylor's first 10 albums. This is before Torture Poets Department was released, and I ranked every single Track 5 song from my least favorite to my favorite. But now that we have the Torture Poets Department and we have So Long London, I feel like it is finally time to do my new updated Track 5 song ranking, not only to fit in So Long London, because that song needs to find its place in the official Track 5 ranking, but also because maybe my other songs, maybe things have shifted around a little bit in the last handful of weeks since I lasted the ranking. Because as I've said before, my opinions on Taylor Swift songs, albums change so regularly. You, if, if you ask me to rank an album or like rank her songs on one day by the next day, I could have a different feeling. Some songs are tried and true. They will never change, but other ones ebb and flow. So we're going to revisit the ranking. We're going to see where I have added So Long London in the ranking, and then also if there's been any other development among the other songs, if, if any of their positions have changed since I last did the ranking. So again, before we get into the ranking, I'm just going to quickly go through the list of albums and each album's track five songs. So on her debut album, Taylor Swift, we have Cold As You, Fearless is White Horse, Speak Now is Dear John, Red, All Too Well, 1989, All You Had to Do Was Stay, Reputation, Delicate, Lover, The Archer, Folklore, My Tears Ricochet, Evermore, Tolerate It, Midnights, You're On Your Own Kid, and The Torture Poets Department is So Long London. Now, in case you don't know this, I feel like most people probably do if they're watching this video, but Taylor's track five songs are just kind of like known to be the most emotional, the most heart heartfelt, vulnerable, personal songs on the album. Taylor didn't initially mean for that to be the case, but over time, over the last, or her first few albums, it became kind of a trend that she, that she recognized and the fans recognized. And so then going forward, she was very intentional about, ch about choosing her track five song. And so the, the, the track five song always has a little bit of extra special meaning for fans, for Taylor herself. Um, and we just, I don't know, we just pay a little bit of closer attention to those songs whenever they, they come out. Okay, let's get to it. Number 11, it's the same as my last one, Cold As You from Debut. It's a good song. It's not a bad song. It's just early, young, 16-year-old Taylor Swift. It's hard to compare. It's honestly not fair to compare 16-year-old Taylor Swift's songwriting. In some ways, it's fantastic. Like, her debut album is honestly, very, very, very good. Um, but it's not always fair to compare that writing and her life experience to stuff that she went through when she was in her mid twenties, early thirties, nowadays, like it's just, it's not fair. So it's at number 11, but not because it's a bad song. Okay. Number 10, we have All You Had to Do Is Stay, 1989. Now this song actually was, um, in my previous ranking, it was number eight. Um, but now it is number 10. Again, I really like this song a lot. I love this album. But in terms of a track five, what, what we look for in a track five song, which is like emotion, vulnerability, um, really being like giving us something very honest and personal. I think she's being honest, but it's not super, it's not super emotional necessarily. Good song, but not a great song. So for that reason, I have it at number 10. Okay, number nine, Tolerate It from Evermore. Now, I really like this song a lot, but I also, to me, when she wrote this, it's it's hard to kind of parse through because I feel like in a lot of ways, when she, when she put out the song, she made it very clear that this was not about her own personal life, that she was writing it, imagining a situation. But now that she's no longer with the person that she was with when she wrote the album, Part of me wonders if it actually was personal um, 
or at least now I see it from a, a more Taylor personal lens, if that makes any sense. So in some ways it actually makes me like the song a little bit more, or I feel more connected to the song in some strange way. Again, I like the song, but I, and I know this is controversial because I know people love it, but it's just, it's not one of my favorite track vibes. So for that reason, it's number nine. Number eight, White Horse. I'm a fearless stan. I love this album so much. It has always been one of my favorite Taylor Swift albums. I don't think that will ever change. I This is the album that made me a Swifty. Like I became a diehard Taylor Swift fan with the album Fearless. So for that reason, I love White Horse. I just think it's a great song. I Again, she's very young when she wrote this song. So your emotions when you're 18 is very different than your emotions when you're 34. But it's still, it's still a great song. You can't deny it. You can't deny it's a great song. Number seven, The Archer. Now I've had a very interesting relationship with The Archer because when I first heard that song and first heard Lover, I honestly didn't love it. I thought it was fine, but I feel like over time I've grown to really, really appreciate this song. I loved it on the tour. I loved it on the Ares tour. I also love people have mentioned this over the years that the reason that there's no like breakthrough in the song and it kind of just stays the way that it is and it's like the same tempo the entire song is because that's what having anxiety feels like. Is it just, it just feels, the song feels like anxiety feels in a lot of ways and that's what the song is about. And so that made me love it so much more. Um, And I think it's a really unique track five song because I think oftentimes her track five songs are about her personal relationships and they're about... They're about like very specific people or specific moments. But for me, this song is about like anxiety and it's about not being sure of yourself and it's dealing with your own personal stuff, which I feel like is a very, it's just a different kind of track five than we've gotten before. So I think it's very good. Number six, Delicate. This song is so, again, it's different too. It's very personal. It's very vulnerable. I feel like it's a very vulnerable song, but I also think it's different because for a lot of these track five songs, they're about a breakup and they're about getting over somebody or dealing with a person, like a very personal struggle, whether that's, you know, anger or depression or whatever. I feel like with Delicate, it's not that. It is much more like, I really like you and I want to be with you, but I'm kind of afraid which is very personal and very, very vulnerable. But it's, again, much like The Archer, it's different than other track vibes we've gotten before. So that made me really like it. I think it's one of the best songs on Reputation. So for that reason, number six. Number five, You're On Your Own Kid, Midnight's. This song is just perfect. It honestly is. It's one of the best songs on Midnight's. I mean, her track fives are always one of her best songs, at least in my opinion. Uh, it gave us the make the friendship bracelet line, which if we had never gotten that line, would we have ever gotten Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey together? I'm not sure. So just for that reason alone, it deserves a top spot on the list. Um, and I also like Delicate and like The Archer. It's a different kind of track five. It is about finding your own inner strength and finding realizing that you can do this on your own. And yes, you ha- you want to have other people in your life and you've been through these different personal struggles and you and these different relationships but ultimately at the end of the day, you are the only person that you have and so like you got to be okay with that. And I think it's a very it's a song that I think a lot of people can relate to um and I just think it's really meaningful and I would really love it if she would add it to the Eras tour set list permanently. It deserves to be played live every single night. Number four, So Long London. It is cracked the top four. This is one of my favorite songs on the Tortured Poets department. I think it is so fantastic. I think it is sonically amazing, lyrically amazing. I think it is a really heartfelt, emotional, devastating song in, in a lot of ways, but I feel like it's Taylor reflecting rather than Taylor being in the moment. I feel like with some track five songs and we'll get to it, you can tell that she's writing the song like in a very specific emotion and very specific moment in time. And there are other track five songs where you can tell that she's writing it kind of with perspective. And I feel like this is a song that she's really writing with a bit of perspective and she is real. She's kind of at the acceptance phase of the relationship ending, which I think is unique. I think it's different in a lot of ways. I think it's fantastic. I think it's great. I'll, I'll be curious to see if this 
ranking changes if if because again this is the most this is the newest song that we have so there's a chance that maybe at some point it could crack the top three but for now number four number three my tears ricochet off of folklore maybe the best song off of folklore maybe i don't know there's that that i mean again that album is like top tier i am obsessed with folklore but i think it is so great the choir sound with it, it it's just a unique sound lyrically again it is so devastating you'll hear my stolen lullabies like dagger through the heart i'm obsessed i'm obsessed i think it is a a plus song and i feel like this is a song when i'm trying to get somebody into taylor swift who's maybe not a taylor swift fan or doesn't appreciate her lyrics i i tend to play them this song because i feel like it wins a lot of people over number two dear john speaking of when i was talking about writing a song in a very specific moment or emotion. I feel like Dear John is one of those songs that she wrote in a very specific moment and emotion in time, but the writing is just sensational. So the the, the, the storytelling is A+. Plus. And uh, I guess to jump ahead to my number one, because I feel like there's a lot of parallels between my two and one song. Number one is All Too Well. I feel like both of these songs are just so gut-wrenchingly honest and so from such a place of like devastation, frankly, and desperation too. I feel like there's a lot of desperation in both of these songs that really come through so vividly. All Too Well, I think is maybe her best written song ever. I can visualize the song so clearly in my head. I can see it. I can feel it almost in some weird ways. And I feel the same way about Dear John. To me, these two songs are like top tier, gold level Taylor Swift, just at her absolute best. And honestly, I don't think you can really dispute that or debate that. Like, it's just how it is. They're some of the best Taylor Swift songs ever written, period. So there you have it. That is my official track five song ranking with the inclusion of So Long London. I would love to know in the comments section what your track five rankings are, what your favorite track five is, maybe your least favorite track five. Share all your thoughts, feelings, concerns in the comments. I want to read them all. Please subscribe to our channel, follow us on social media, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.